from a pilot's standpoint of view, how to fly non-precision approaches. So uh, together, I will we'll put us inside the cockpit and we'll try to see uh, how to fly non-precision approaches with some tips and guidelines and maybe things you have forgotten in the past from your, your basic uh, training as pilot information that was given, even in regulation. So we'll do what our review, what about training, how to brief the crew or the pilots together, and then the procedure at the end uh, explained by Maxim. What should I review? The first thing when we have an unprecision approach is the type of approach. As uh, Julien explained, we have really a lot of different namings in, in approaches. And uh, the problem actually is that we have naming on the charts and we have different namings in the FMS. So we are working as well with uh, ICAO in order to have a kind of commonality in naming what you see on the chart and what you will see inside in the cockpit. It's a long-term uh, action that we have and we are working uh, intensively with them. The second thing, how will I fly the approach? Will I use the CDFA or the constant descent flight pattern angle or will I do it without? What about the minimas? Which minima can I use and do I have to use? And last but not least, we're going to discuss a little bit the runway lighting. I could say, Xavier, why runway lighting? Well, runway lighting is important in approaches. As Julien said, we have different types of approaches. We have information coming from the ground, ground-based information with lateral and vertical guidance, which are basically the ILS or the MLS. We can have ground-based information with uh, lateral guidance only, uh, starting from a light signal somewhere in France now to a localizer only or VR and so on. Or we can have information given by the onboard system, the aircraft-based systems. All those systems will generate a kind of minima. So based on the system, we have the lowest published minimas which are possible in the world. So like for an ILS, <coughs> sorry, MLS or GLS, we have seen 200 feet. For a VR approach, for instance, you will never see a minima below 300 feet. On aircraft-based uh, system, we have seen the LPV, similar to what's an ILS, down to 200 feet. Uh, GNSS, down to 250. And GNSS Barrow, the same, down to 250 feet. So we see we have clearly guidances coming from the aircraft leading to the same minima as an ILS. We have different vertical profiles. <coughs> we had this one that I could find. The old one, where, uh, dive and drive. So we start the approach by a fixed rate of descent of maybe 1,000 feet a minute. We lower at the MDA and then we do a level flight towards the runway until we see it and then we try to get on the ground if it's still possible. This is not our recommended procedure. We have other approaches, constant descent flight path angle. If you look into the regulation, it could be either in an angle, you can select the flight path angle for the descent, in this case three degree. But descending at a fixed vertical speed is as well a constant descent flight angle in the regulation. So you can descend as well based on your ground speed, let us for instance 140 feet, you can descend at a rate of descent of about 750 feet continuously to, that, to follow that profile. But of course you have to respect the minimum altitude at the different points during the vertical descent. Then the last one, as we have seen, we have the one with uh, the aid of the GPS. We have the LPV, uh, that's localizer performance with vertical guidance, LNAV VNAV, um, and the LNAV CDFA. So we have seen the different approaches that we have. So the techniques, as we said, you have to either you decide to do it CDFA or without. And basically, we do not recommend this one. On the bottom of each slide, you will see the reference uh, we have put in the EASA regulation, where you can find this information. Of course, you will not find in the information EASA that we do not recommend the one without CDFA. Yeah? This is our policy. So to ensure a vertical profile, either you have a vertical profile coded in the FMS, which is the preferred way to go down on a non-precision approach, or you descend 
uh, with the flight path angle that you will select on the FCU. Uh, it could be an angle or a vertical speed. So this is the one recommended rate of descent. So these are the three recommended techniques that we want to promote, starting with the most to the left, the one which is coded in the FMS. So we have seen the minimas are based on the system, ground or aircraft guidance system, and as well on the approach light system. So I don't know if you remember this, and this is a picture I found from a very strange airport, where we have all the possible approach lights that you can find in the world. <laughs> all the runways are parallel, so you can choose the approach light system that you want. <laughs> Going from a, in the center one, uh, the most classical one that you see, uh, where you have got two, got three lightnings. Then you have the other one over here, basic similar, but it's called Calvert. Well, this has been invented in the UK. Uh, we have Harry Nelson here in the room who worked on that, where basically you have a kind of arrow shape in the approach light system to guide the pilots throughout the runway. But we don't find them a lot on the world. So you see we go from almost no approach light system to a full or to some basic approach light system that you can find in front of a runway. Now, based on those approach light system, in the definition, you have the same in the FAA world. Eh? We have the full approach light system. This means that the lighting system is at least 720 meters long. We have the intermediate one between 420 and 720. A basic one, which is between 210 and 420 meters. And if you have less than 210 meters of approach light system, regulation-wise, it's like having no approach light system. Now, having said that, uh, having a look to what we find as well in the regulation, that based on the DH, the decision height, which is computed uh, with the obstacle clearance and so on, so if we have an obstacle clearance of a decision height of 200 feet, between 200 and 210 feet, if we have a full approach light system, you have 550 meters RVR required. If you have no approach light system, it's 1,200 meters that you need. Try to remember those figures. So you see that on the 550, I think you know this figure, this is the Cat 1 minimas that you find on the runway. Now, I'm on an approach. I took here 200 feet. I have a full approach light system, about 720 meters. When I reach the minima, will I see the runway, yes or no? What do you think? Yes, no, maybe, if I'm very lucky. <laughs> so, if you do a little computation, we go back to high school. So, if you want to know the distance between the aircraft and uh, the runway, the touchdown point on a uh, three-degree glide slope, you have to divide this by uh, the distance of three degrees. So, basically, this gives us 1160 meters, 3,800 blah, blah, feet. So, basically, as a rule of thumb, what I remember from my very, very first IFR training, you take the minimas, you multiply by six, and if I have this visibility, 1,200 meters, I know that at the minimas I will see the runway. Now, having seen in the regulation that I need only 550 meters of RVR, okay, we will not go in the details between slant range visibility and that so on, but roughly, I see 550 meters in front of me, this means that I still have a 310 meter segment obscured in front of me. So remember, when you do an approach at the real minimas, the chance of seeing the runway are none. As well, seeing a puppy or something like this in order to continue to control your vertical path, probably you will not see the puppy in order to guide you. This is why, in this phase of flight, the role of the pilot monitoring in order to help you as pilot flying to stay on the correct vertical path is very, very important. So we have seen now the minimas based on the system, aircraft system and the lights. Now what about training? What do we see in training? The regulation, uh, this acceptable means of compliance, says prior, prior to use the CDFA techniques, each flight crew member should undertake appropriate training and checking. Not only training, but checking as well as you find in the regulation. And the proficiency check should include, each proficiency check, not skill test, 
should include at least one approach down to the landing or missed approach using this technique so that your pilots are familiar with the technique that you promote. Let it be the final APP mode, let it be the CDFA technique. When you do this kind of training, uh, you should do it up to the lowest distance and altitude or the H. And if you do it in an FSTD, as well to the lowest approved RVR. It's not easy in the simulator to do this, I can assure you. And the approach, of course, is not in addition to any maneuver required in part FCL for the skill test. It's part of the proficiency check. So you have to train and keep and be competent in doing this. Crew briefing. So let's fly the approach and as PM, what should I do? The PM role is pilot monitoring and it's an engagement role. He has to be engaged with the, uh, the pilot flying. So first, when, what are the conditions to start an approach? If we go into the regulation again, you can start at any time the approach. Before it was, the minimas have to be fluctuating around, now they changed. And they have put a point at 1,000 feet above the aerodrome. If at that point you don't have the required RVR, you have to do a go-around. If you have the required RVR, you are authorized to continue the approach. Once you reach the minimum descent altitude, again, there is a, a gate that we have to pass. If I'm visual, I can continue. If I'm not visual, I have to go around. And this go around of not being visual is even if you lose the visual once you have passed the missed approach point, you have to go around. I know there is a big temptation with the precision that we have, as Julia explained, in our lateral navigation that we are quite precise to say, well, let's continue, maybe we'll see the runway later. No way. You don't see, you go around. So some tips uh, for a successful approach. What I, should I review? That's basically what I, in my little hat, I do each time I fly a non-precision approach. First, I will look to the approach light system. And I don't think that we are used to do this in our briefing, to know what kind of approach light system do I have in front of me. When I will be visual during daytime, during nighttime, and bad visibility, what kind of flights will I have? And this is why this has been put or printed on the approach chart now. Second thing, what will be my approach slope? Is it a normal one? Is it a steeper one? Because sometimes non-precision approaches have descent angles of 3.2, 3.3, 3.4 degrees. Based on that, what are the weather conditions? Will I do this approach with tailwind or not? Steep approach with tailwind is not easy to fly or it's more demanding. Next one, the minimas. And based on the minimas, don't forget that you have to apply temperature correction. In case of cold weather operation, you have to correct your minimas for cold weather, as well as all the other approaches, correction, all the other altitude during the approach. <clears throat> Once I have seen this, I will look to the required RVR. And I will do my little rule of thumb. I have 450 feet times 6, 2,700 meters, compared to what is published. So I know that I will see only a part of the approach flight system in this case. After that, carefully review the coding into the FMS with the minimum altitude. Very important point as well for the pilot monitoring, that he's monitoring you when you fly the approach, that even if you fly manually, that you don't go below. Those altitudes published in the profile are really mandatory where sometimes you have on charts recommended altitude printed in order to stay on the descent angle. And then last but not least, the approach QFU towards the runway. Is this an offset approach or not? Uh, knowing that if you do an offset approach with crosswind, maybe you will have less chance to see the approach light system than to be in a straighting approach. Visual references, so what do you need to see? Once you come, you break out at the minima, it's not because you see a church or a tree next to you that you see in visual, not vertically. You have to see in front of you. Either you see all the elements of the runway in daytime, 
or in night time you have to see at least the elements of the approach that system or the runway. But you have to see something linked to the place you're going to land. If you lose them below the minima, you have to go around. So this is, in a nutshell, uh, how I will myself perform an approach with my crew briefing and review this carefully with my pilot non-flying or pilot monitoring.